Hello and welcome to this month's edition of the Big Green Dome Lunch Club Live. Hey, hello. My name is Martin and I'm Steph and we are going to host today's show. It is lovely to have you with us again. Hope you guys are well. It's Saturday the 11th of July and we're raring to go. So straight away, let's go and meet the rest of the team. Hi, I'm Paul. Hi, I'm Ali. Hello, I'm Lynn. Whee! Hello, everybody. I'm Claire. And I'm Claire. Lovely to see you again. Oh, that was great to see everybody. Um, but Steph, what was that thing that um, Paul and Ali and Lynn were all like playing with when they said hello? Oh, that's a boomerang. A boomerang? I love boomerangs. Uh -huh. Paul's going to show us how to make one today. We're going to make a boomerang? Yeah. Well, I... a paper one that you can throw around and see if it'll come back to you. Oh, that's amazing. I want to do that. I want to do that. Ah. Can we do it now? Well, first, we're just going to tell them about our game. <gasps> I love a game so as well. So today, we've got a game for you, an observational game <gasps> of Spot the Difference. Oh. So every time we come back to us... The two in of us. this room, here, something will have changed. Oh yeah, like one time I might come back and I've grown a great big beard. Uh, yeah, but not in the time we've got today, you can't have grown a great big beard. No, okay. No. And I won't have turned into a monkey. Oh, that would be funny. <laughs> but just smaller things that might have changed, see if you can spot them, and at the end of the show, we'll give you the answers. Oh, brilliant. Right, now can we go to Paul for the boomerang? Yes, we can. Over to you, Paul. I'm going to show you how to make a boomerang out of paper that actually does fly back to you. You need an ordinary piece of A4 printer paper. Actually, you only need half, so you can make two out of one piece of paper. So, Alex and Oliver, if you want, you can make one each. First of all, we're going to split it into two. So, fold it carefully down the middle and give it a good old crease. And fold it back on itself and crease it the other way because that makes it easier to tear. And then fold it flat and gently pull it apart. Don't rush this. And there you go. A paper to make one boomerang. I'm going to move the camera so you can see because there's some fairly awkward folds, but it isn't too difficult to do. OK, so you take your half piece of paper and you fold it in half again. I'm going to try and get these folds as accurate as you can. I'm going to do it a bit quickly, but you need to take a little bit more time and try and get all the folds square and true. Open it up again and now fold the outside into the middle but not quite into the middle. Leave a little bit of a gap so it doesn't actually get quite to the, to the line that you form with the first crease. And then you do the same on the other side and again don't come quite to the middle and there's a reason for leaving that gap is that when you fold these two in together you don't want them to get in each other's way so you fold it in gently even though it's not quite perfect but now you give some jolly good old creases along both sides for this now you open it up again and fold one end in to the other I'm going to fold these two corners in, make 45 degree corners, and these are going to be important creases, so we're going to fold them the other way in a moment, and, and make them even stronger, so you make a nice good old crease this side, 
turn it over and you fold them back on exactly the same crease and give a good old crease with the back of your nail. And you fold it flat. Now you open it out and you open, in this case, I'm going to open the right hand side one and it's going to make a right hand, right handed boomerang. If you want to do a left handed one, you have to open out this side and do the mirror image. Now I hope you can see there's a, a diamond pattern which we formed with our folding and a line across the middle here. Now we want to make these even more pronounced so we fold that one turn out the other way around and make these creases stronger in this direction now then we're going to fold this back in on itself but we're going to just gently help this diamond shape push that in and then fold this way so that this top piece of the diamond goes down onto the center line like that. And that's what's making the corner in the middle of the boomerang and we can fold that and that in like so and what we get is the L-shaped boomerang on the flat and then there's like a, a wall around the outside. Now we're going to next fold the other side in and we want this corner to push out and come down towards us as we're folding it. That's the basic boomerang shape. But at the moment that's flapping around and that's not much use. So this is the most awkward bit. We want to stop this flapping so we open this one up gently. We open up this one and we take this corner and we fold it back in and we fold it into that place in there in that pocket. Gently ease pieces back in. And there we go. Now it can be done neater than that and it is quite important to do it neater than that if you can. I don't really have time this morning to, to do it otherwise you'll get bored. Now um, we need to make the ends now so we open up one end and we fold in 45 degree corners. Again, try and do it neater than I am, these. Fold them out again. Now, what we want to do is take this end, this side, and push, reverse that 45 degrees so that thing, those come in together and they form a little pocket. And then we want to fold this round and put that corner into the pocket like that. With your small fingers it might be a bit easier than it is with mine. Same at the other end. This one's a little bit more because there's three pieces of paper on this side but we do the same thing fold that in to make the pocket open this one up fold it back and put the corner into the pocket Help it on its way in and there you go one boomerang as I mentioned, that is a right hand boomerang, so right handed people throw it. 
I've also got a, a left-handed boomerang which looks very similar but actually is slightly different. Top of the boomerang has got the, dia the diagonal line on it. The bottom of the boomerang has got the square line. So the top is important. You hold the boomerang in the corner and you spin it clockwise if you're right-handed and you can see that the front of the wing is the fold and the back of the wing is the pocket and it's the same on this one this wing front and back now with the left-handed boomerang you hold it in the corner and you spin it this way round and again the front of the wing back of the wing front of the wing back of the wing so that's the difference between a right and a left-handed boomerang in terms of throwing of course you don't have to just have a white boomerang and I think it'd be really nice if you wanted to colour your boomerang. Um, here's some ideas that I've found on the internet for uh, artwork produced by Aboriginal in, uh, Australians who made the original boomerangs and you can see they're brightly coloured which is great fun. Uh, and there's the sun, stars, moon, I think this is a snake and, and just general bright colours and lines. And I think it'd be really nice to make something like that with your boomerang. But the important thing is, how do they fly? Should we go and try it in the garden? Unfortunately, it's very windy out here today, so I'm not sure how well these are going to work. But basically, you can hold the boomerang by the corner. You throw it outwards, upwards, and spin it clockwise with your right hand in. And you've got lots of your left hand. Let's give this a try. I think the wind is going to defeat us though. I'm whizzing across the garden. This is another right handed one. Sort of come back. This is the left hand one. I don't know. At least it's not going to be windy in here because Paul was outside and it was really windy. Yeah. So give here we go. go. Give it a go. Come Ready? on. Throw it. Three, two, one, go. Wow. Yes. yes. It does work. Great. I'm going to try again. Ready? Yeah. Wow. Yes. Pretty good. I'm going to keep playing with this for a while. Yeah. Meanwhile, why don't we go and catch up with Claire and Hannah in the kitchen? What are they making today? I don't know. Shall we find out? Yeah. Hello everybody. Hello everybody. Today, what are we going to be cooking, Hannah? Can you tell everybody at home? We're cooking sardines? No. What are we cooking? Pasta. Pasta? I thought we were going to cook some lovely chocolate rocky road. Is that what we're going to cook? Yeah. Yes. So the first thing we need to do is we need our 100 grams of dark chocolate. And to break some up. You can break some up, which goes into our bowl. Yeah, do to break that bit up? Well done. Just to break some more up. There you go. Breaking it all up nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Then you add to that two tablespoons of golden syrup. That's two big squeezes. One and two. Super. Then you need 50 grams of butter. Can you turn the scales on? They got to zero. That's ready. Ready. Already. And so we need 50 grams. 
House of Fuck Bitch, I think is about that much. Can you put the pieces of butter in the bowl? And then they put go straight in the bowl. Can you put them in? with the rolling pin. You, think you could do that? Yeah. Right, while Hannah's doing that, I'm going to check on our mixture in the lock, right? So it's come out looking like this. I'm going to keep, going to keep bashing. Good girl. Make sure you bash the biscuits. Then I'll stir this. And it looks like one minute has just about done it. So it's all smooth. Would you like to stir this? And mummy will do some bashing. Roads look like they are gonna be delicious. Mmm, yum, I love Rocky Road. Can we make them as well? Oh, yes, we can. Brilliant. Mmm, mm, mm. all those marshmallows. Yeah? Mmm, mmm. But first, Ooh. we need to go and see Lynn. She's got some more craft for us again. <gasps> what is Lynn gonna show us how to make this time? I'm not sure, but I think she's using fizzy drinks bottles. <gasps> Shall we go and see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Hello again, and if you remember last month, I showed you how to make an elephant out of a milk bottle top and a cat. Well, this month we're going to be using lemonade bottles and we're going to make these pigs. So you could make, I'm going to show you how to make this pig planter that I've put a nice plant in top of. But I'm also going to show you how to make this pig, which you can either use as a piggy bank or you could use again as a planter if you use a bigger bottle. So let's get cracking. The first thing that you need is a lemonade bottle. Now, obviously, the first thing you need to do is to take the, the label, the packaging off, and that should leave you with just a clear plastic bottle. Now, somewhere about there, there is a line. And I, what I've done is cut around that line. It can be a bit difficult. You might want a parent to help you um, with a sharp knife so that you've got some sort of incision before you start your scissors. But I, having got the, the, the cut, I managed to cut them with scissors all the way around. So what I ended up with was something that looked like this. Now remember, you obviously once again need to wash these bottles out before you use them, otherwise you'll get lemonade everywhere and preferably drain them well, otherwise you'll get water everywhere. So that's your base for your plant pot holder. The next thing you need to do is to cut out two ears. Now again, what I did is I, I drew a template and cut it out and then I put it kind of about here and cut it out of the, the rest of the bottle with quite a long um, lead in shape here so that you can stick it just inside. And if you do it, cut it over the, the curvy bit, then it gives you a nice curve to the ears. So here are my ears, one, two, and you can see where I've used a, a permanent marker to actually trace, trace around my template onto the plastic bottle to cut it out. Now you might want to, I'm going to use sellotape, but you might want to use masking tape like this just to stick them in. The other thing you might want to do, which is actually what I've done on this one, is I cut them all out in one piece so that there wasn't any sticking to do. So we just need to stick these in. It's a bit tricky and I should stick them on the inside one. And of course you're going to do a better job than me because you will um, have spent more time and care on it. And two. Okay. Not a better angle, is it? Let's try again. And two. And there you have your ears. Now the next thing we need to do is paint it. Now I used some emulsion, the old emulsion that I found in the garage, and just painted it. Actually, this is lavender, uh, lavender pink. Um, but you can colour every time, any colour you like, or what you could do is the same as we did with the uh, milk bottle, and you could cover it with little bits of paper to make it multicoloured. But once you've painted it, then we need to look at the snout and the eyes. So I chose to use a bright pink colour, some card that I found. But you could use any colour you like, and all I've done is drawn out my shapes. There's kind of quite a large oval, which is probably a bit better if it's a bit more like a kidney bean shape and a couple of eye shapes. So I'm going to cut those out. And my eye shapes. And again, yours will probably be much neater than mine because you would have taken lots of time and care doing it. And then take a black felt tip pen and for the nose you just want to put two piggy holes nostrils there and for the eyes you just want to colour in the pupils something like that you might want to do them a bit bigger actually And then all I did was glue them using your PVA glue straight onto the front. Now you may have to hold it a little while so that it sticks. I'm obviously not going to do that. I think mine stuck better because it was painted. Right. Right. And then 
you get the drift. And then finally, for a little piggy tail, I cut out a little bit more of the plastic of the bottle. And then I used a screwdriver or something quite thin, just to wrap it round quite tightly. And when I've done that, I've got a little curly tail like that. And again, if you just take some sellotape, you might want to paint that pink or whatever, and just stick it just inside. You've got a pig with a curly tail. And then all you need to do is put your plant inside there. And you've got a very nice pig plant holder. So that's the plant holder for that one. For this one, what I did was I actually used a Fanta bottle like this and I cut it about there, I think. I cut it there, took the label off and then I inserted this bit as far in as I could get it. So I kind of shrunk the bottle, if you like. But if you're going to be using this for a plant pot holder, for a plant holder, put it outside, the best idea is probably to use a five litre big, one of those big water uh, containers because then you've got quite a big space to make a nice hole in to put some plants and flowers in. If you're going to be using it for a piggy bank, then probably that's a better idea. And then all you need to do is cut a slot in the top so that you can put your precious pocket money in. So that's the base. You obviously need the, um, the top still on there for the nose. And then the underneath is just lots of bottle tops and they're his feet. Now, alternatively, you perhaps could use just the top of the bottle like that. Now, you need some good, strong glue to stick those on because you're sticking it onto plastic. Um, so you might want a bit of help with that one. I don't know whether you've got um, a glue gun at home or something like that. But just talk to your parents and get their help to stick that on if it doesn't work. And then I used the same idea, same principle for the ears as I used for this one. So it was just a case of cutting them out at the top of the bottle, around the bottleneck bit here. And then I stuck them on with glue. And again, the tail was the same principle, except it's not curled quite as much, and stick that on with glue. Then I painted the whole thing pink, but again, you might want to um, use squares of paper or whatever. And then I just cut out some eyes and put them on the front and put a couple of holes there. And so there you have it, two pigs, that you can make any time from a lemonade bottle and a bit of imagination. Hope you enjoyed that and look forward to seeing you next time. Wow, thanks Lynn, they look great. We've got loads of plants. I think we could make one of those piggy plant pots. Yeah, and I might have a try at making the piggy bank where you keep your money. Yeah. That would be good. Now, can we <clears throat> head over to Claire and Hannah again and see how they're getting on with the marshmallows and the rocky roads. Oh yes, I wonder if she's put in enough marshmallows yet. I think she needs more. More marshmallows! Well done. Right, I think that's probably enough, don't you? So now we've got to give this a really big stir. I did it. A big stir. You need to put those Smarties in as well. Yeah. So we've, we're, we're aiming for two packets of Smarties, but Hannah's eaten quite a few. And then you just give it a nice stir until everything's coated. You can put whatever you like into it. Oh, oops, a daisy. Oh. Never mind. Are you going to put them in the bowl? Or should we sprinkle them on top once we've done it? Should we save those ones to sprinkle on top? Okay, you keep stirring. Back up on your chair. Then you keep stirring. Where are you going? So in this bowl.
bowl we've got 100 grams of chocolate, 50 grams of butter, we've got two tablespoons of golden syrup, which we melted in the microwave for one minute, and then we added in 125 grams of biscuits. We used biscoff, but you can use whatever type of biscuits you like. Um, we've put in some marshmallows, a few handfuls of marshmallows, and a tube of Smarties. And now we're going to pour it into our dish. Looks like it's got a little bit of flour in it. Right, you're going to put it in the dish, Hannah. Good girl. You might want to add some dried fruit to yours or anything else you can think of that would be nice to go in. I know what are you doing. Are you eating the marshmallows again? Right, that's enough, I think. Come and sit down and help with the cooking. So then it's all in the dish and you can press it down. And then we just need to decorate the top. So to we, de we can decorate the top with a few more marshmallows and with a few more smarties. Do to do some decorating? Lovely. Is it for me? No, it's for you to eat. Marshmallows sprinkled on? No. I think it probably is, you know. No. Okay, one more handful and that will be enough. Okay, that's enough now. And now, should we decorate the top with some Smarties? Do you want to sprinkle those on? Spread them round. Spread them over. to push those down gently to make sure they stick to our rocky road and then it go says happy birthday happy birthday to me does it say happy birthday to you are you going to eat it all yourself no. great so that's our rocky road all made it now just needs to go in the fridge until it's set and then we can cut it up and eat it can't we yeah Oh, Steph, those rocky roads, they looked amazing. Mm, thank you so much, Hannah and Claire. Mm. I can't wait to try them. Yes, let's do that later. <gasps> oh, yeah. But I think we might need to get some marshmallows. Mm. Now, it's time to tell you the answers to our Spot the Difference game we've been playing all morning. Have you remembered to be seeing what the differences are on our screen. Mm, I didn't manage to grow the beard, so that's not one of them. No. How many did you spot? One, two, three, four, or maybe more? Mm. Mm. Well, we're going to give you the answers now, and in fact, there were just four. <gasps> four. So, we're going to put the answers up on the screen now, and you just have to be honest and say, did you see them or not? So, here they come. So, the first one is that we swapped the mugs over from the blue spotty ones to plain brown ones. Yeah, number two was the cushions changed from plain red to a sort of tartan pattern. Mm. The third one is when Martin and I actually swapped clothes, wore each other's hoodies. <laughs> that was a fun one. And then number four, the flowers that were over there changed we took the flowers away and we put this kind of brass coffee pot there did you spot that one mm. Mm. okay so that is about all we have time for so what's next steph well i think that means it's probably just time to say goodbye shall we go around and say goodbye to the team yeah let's do that bye bye have a really good summer hope to see you in person next time See you! Bye from me, hope to see you soon. Bye bye everybody! Bye bye everybody! Bye bye everybody! So just before we say goodbye, 
We just want to let you know that this is the last Big Green Dome Lunch Club live before the summer. We won't be doing one in August for definite. So you're just going to have to watch this space and see what comes next. Okay, and that's it. It's time for us to say goodbye now. So have a great summer, everybody, and goodbye. Bye.